Hey everybody, my next guest is among one of the rising singer and songwriters from the Raleigh, North Carolina area with the smooth, raspy vocals mixed with a unique blend of folk and alternative acoustic guitar. He's sure to capture audiences of all generations. He was recently on the show Chasing the Dream with his mentor Bobby Bones and is open for Bobby as well as Jason Adamo, Chris Hendricks, and Nick Driver. He is a one of a kind who is on the rise to success. Here he is, my very talented son, Donnie Sill. Hey, hey. Donnie. Hey. Hey. It's great to have you on the show, Donnie. We, we've been talking about Get John for a long time. Um, yeah. You're a great musician, and you've been doing so much in the last few years. So, uh, so tell me what's been going on lately. What What are you up to? Uh, lately, I've been writing uh, jingles and short music members for Animation.com. It's an NFT company. I've been composing their music for the last two years it's uh, truly a, an honor and really fun to be um, working with them creating doing music from a different area of the music industry now so it's like i kind of bring it out like the beethoven in me a little bit <laughs> when your seam starts ripping, ripping up the side, you need a pair of sturdy jeans made just for white, white load, white load jeans. Yeah, you've been, you've, uh, I, I love what you're doing with that, um, with those NFTs and, and that whole thing and it's bringing out a different side of what you're doing. So you're, you know, you're, you're a musician who can, an artist and a very creative uh, kid. Uh, a young man and so I, I love what you're doing and with these nfts it kind of brings out a different creative style uh where you get to manipulate oh, yeah. your voice a little bit you're you're writing funny lyrics so how do you get um caught up with with uh and what's it called again and the the animation company animation.com animation.com and how do you get how do you get involved with them so um i had a work buddy that actually serves his house and he was reaching out to him and was like, hey, if you know a um, music composers or any artists that are interested in working with me, here's my card. So my coworker gave me his card and then I reached out to him and then he gave me an audition jingle for me to write and record and I did it within an hour. And then he was like, all right, you're hired. <clears throat> so that's basically cool. how it happened. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 that's how a lot of the best things do normally happen, um, you know. But random, you know what I mean? The, it just kind of falls in and and happens, uh, happens that way. Just like with chasing the dream, this this television show that you were on. But before right. I get into that, I I, I want to continue on with the NFTs. Um, but I just realized I forgot to change my background to my normal set. There we go. Oh. There you go. Wayne's <laughs> World. Yeah. The Wayne's World set. So I like to have this when we're doing an official conversation. And with NFTs and in the NFT game, have you learned anything about NFTs? And like, what are they? And are they still valuable? Uh, I haven't really got my hands on to like collecting NFTs. However, I am moved by the way how the music industry in today is kind of adapting more towards, you know, um, um, streaming on top of the fact that it's more social media based and it's not even just about being signed to a label or um, being promoted by a huge management company it's about it's a total DIY situation now where anybody can put their hands on releasing their own music selling their own songs and stuff that I've been doing and it's really anyone's game right now and like it's only going to get more advance over the next few years i think i think that nfts are going to take over the music industry how so how does like what so what is, what is an nft and how does it fit into the music industry basically it's a non-fungible uh, token uh, i'm not too familiar with uh, cryptocurrency but it's a type of cryptocurrency and basically you record a song or a, a short music and basically it can come along with like an animated short or a picture and i could be wrong with what i'm saying right now too but 
<laughs> um, basically, a buyer will, will, will buy it and then they'll hold on to it and then it will accumulate value and then we'll resell it. In short, NFT stands for non-fungible token. If an asset is fungible, it means it can be replaced or exchanged and its value stays the same. For example, five $20 bills has the same value as one $100 bill, right? Therefore, non-fungible assets cannot be substituted. These are assets like land, homes, or even baseball cards. Their value is defined by their own unique qualities, which can take away or add value. Now, those examples are physical. NFTs are digital assets or tokens. Tokens are digital certificates stored in a secure database, also known as a blockchain. A fungible token would be crypto, whereas a non-fungible token can be in the form of digital art, digital land, or collectibles. For example, Martha Stewart just released her own line of curated photography and art in the form of NFTs via her Shopify store, MarthaFreshman.com. NFTs are ranging in value from $1 to $63 million. Now, as an independent artist, and you've been you've been playing clubs and, and uh, doing gigs all around the Triangle Raleigh area since you were like 15 years old, um when yeah. the social media thing starts po started popping probably really about like 10 years ago maybe a little bit more maybe 10 15 years yeah. ago it started really 10 years ago. really making an impact and 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 making a difference is this working for you or against you as an artist is this something that you embrace or something that you like i like the old way better or are you happy with this method of it's kind of mixed between the two because i think my generation was the first generation to kind of was on the exit of the traditional way of getting discovered and releasing music and being signed to a record label, being told that this is the way that goes. This is how you're going to make it big. This is how you're going to make money by being signed to Atlantic Records and they're going to blow you up to a big superstar. To where, like, we were transitioning into the Instagram artist, the YouTube artist. Looking at Justin Bieber, he was one of the first YouTube artists that basically broke out and got discovered by a superstar like Usher or in today's world like um Little Nas X had um Old Town Road that was a that he released on TikTok and became a big hit. You know, um we're talking about that was five years ago though. But you know like even today like you're seeing artists that are that it's not based on, you know, how much you know records you sell obviously because you know holding a, a physical piece of music doesn't have the same value, in my opinion, as having the amount of streams or the amount of followers on Instagram or TikTok. It's all about people liking you, and that's what's selling music these days, in my opinion. It's not even about the physical artist. It is, but... Um, because does I this see change... A ton. I was going to say, does this change um, your your when you're writing music that does this change your goals like as far as wanting to be signed to a label versus wanting to um you know get like a tiktok hit like what's the it's does it change of, that goal it's kind of both because like i've been writing songs for a really long time now and i've, I've gone through different eras of genres and, and um emotions that i've been that i put my music to everything from my guitar playing and guitar style to my songwriting and to my singing you know so i try to adapt to what i feel and if i think that i can write a catchy song that an instagram or an instagram or a tiktok follower can like and enjoy and then use it towards their video that's that's a hit you know and also try to think of a radio DJ playing my song on the radio, you know, on a mainstream radio station, you know, that's kind of a goal too to have, you know, so you want to have the listeners, you know, um, listen on both sides of the world. But I think that Instagram and like TikTok, like the social media game as actually your ticket to getting in onto the radio these days because like the the more you have an uh, a listener on TikTok hearing one of my songs and using it towards their video you're going to have a million people doing that and then that's a hit song and then record labels can catch on to that or even a local radio station will catch on to that anyone even like a superstar like Post Malone you know or 
Usher, you know, <laughs> will be like, oh, I like this song. You know, <laughs> let's see if I can work with this guy. You know, so I, I think like... that it's a blessing and a curse because a lot of people, you know, still have this idea of what you're supposed to do to make it big in music or in, in the industry and what's happening right now. And it's like, we're definitely on the out of the traditional, you know, play the bars, play the squats, play the small clubs and, you know, grind our teeth out, get our bumps and bruises. And there's the shortcut is, you know, social media now. Made in America, wear them with pride. Don't forget the pink flags you wear each side. White load, white load jeans, white load jeans. Has the NFT, you know, animation.com uh, gig, when you're writing these kind of fun songs, has that this kind of uh, um, helped you in that regard to kind of, you know, um, to get things to go viral? Or is it just something that you don't really think about? Or how does that work? Um, I never really thought of it that way. I mean, when I do the NFT music, I'm basically writing it to make myself laugh and make my boss laugh, you know, and try to fit towards the job, you know, understanding the assignment of I'm doing this for this product versus me thinking I'm doing this to write a hit song. You know, but at the same time, too, it does help me with creativity. It does help me with evolving with writing a catchy song, you know, or with me producing music. I'm actually in trial and error of learning how to, you know, produce better. You know, I'm, I'm learning and teaching myself how to learn the trade. Have yeah. any of those um, NFT songs, because you, you've done so many good ones. We're going to show a bunch. Um, yeah. th they're so funny, and they're just well-produced and well-made. And then the combination of that with the animation and, and the NFT and the whole the whole vibe. Um, has any of them gone viral? Uh, not has gone viral yet, but I think we're still in the works of trying to launch the animation show. And... Once that happens, we'll see, you know. I have I have to strongly believe in the product. Uh, Mylon's an amazing person to work with. And, and the team that he has built around him, me included, you know, I feel like that we got something good going on. So do you communicate with the animators and all of that? Like well, tell me, take me through like the process from the pitch, like when he pitches you the idea to how you formulate it to to the you know, the whole product. And and what's the guy's name who runs the uh, animation.com? His name is Mylon Reichbach, I, I, if I pronounce his name correctly. Right. <laughs> but um, basically the process is he'll have this idea for a silly song. It's not necessarily promote advertising a product. It's just like background music too, or like he'll write like a silly song like, Who's gonna wipe my grandma's ass? You know, or he'll he'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, and like he'll record himself singing it, and then I will go ahead, and ninety percent of the time I'll end up re-recording the vocals, or he'll want me to use his vocals, but that, that's very rare. He'll do that, but um, or he'll have like a jingle called "White Low Jeans," and he'll just sing it out. And then I will figure out what kind of music I want to incorporate in wide low jeans. You know, <laughs> I think of a jean company, I think of country, working man kind of vibe. So I created this jingle for it where like I'm kind of like a country band singing about wide low jeans. And I have a five piece um, vocal harmony to go, you know, along with the lead singer. By the way, all the music instruments production mixing editing that's all me too right yeah which is which is fun because you know like it, it's getting me more confidence to be able to record my own stuff and the visions i've had with my own bands in the past where i, I feel you know uh, the, where the instrument should go and how it should sound like now that you know animation.com has helped me kind of break out of my show a little bit with my own personal projects too but 
basically going back to um, how the process works is I'll record the song and then I'll send it over to him and then he'll, you know, be like, all right, I want you to try to, you know, make the vocal sound a little more clear or he'll go like, I kind of want the pitch to go a little bit softer or I'm kind of feeling the music to sound more like this and I'll just go ahead and, you know, just re-record it and or edit it and then submit it. He goes, all right, cool. And then he gets his, one of his animators to, you know, do the animation. And then. That's cool. So they, they're animating. When they animate the cartoon, it's, it's it's all around your music. It's all about around what you did. So so they're animating to you. It's not the other way around. Basically, yeah. Because I'm not seeing the animated. You know, I'm just. Right. You just got the idea. And then you just kind of go with it. I'm and kind you're... of doing everything blindly, you know, but that's the thing with composing this music too, is I got to think of what I want it to sound like and what the animator is going to uh, respond to the music, right. which is pretty cool because it's like someone's like kind of drawing a picture of your music. Right. You know? yeah. And that's. And I think it's that stuff because you've been working with the animation.com guys for a while now, right? Like what, about over a year, I'd say, right? Uh, two years. Yeah, two years. So I think this opened up a porthole in your mind and your thinking because you were always a creative guy always writing songs since you were a little kid and um you're playing doing music and you're very you know your guitar skills and all of that but this opened up another kind of porthole in your thinking and your creative process to where i think that's without i don't think you would have gotten your latest song that that you're just releasing which is the gazoo song without yeah animation.com i think animation.com kind of helped you discover this different side of yourself and within that you come with the gazoo the gazoo song i'm getting really sick of staying at home with nothing to do and nowhere to go just to think that it was only a joke i laugh to pretend that it was only a hoax well, I've been stuck here for a real long time As I must admit that I'm losing my mind I'm laying down on the couch with a slouch And I drink all day and I talk to myself I've had dreams of what it'd be to be with aliens and mercury Cause I'm bored and there is nothing to do When I go to my room, when I blow my kazoo It goes... You know, like that 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 song that was actually written before animation.com. But um learning my, you know, from producing animation.com helped, you know, me, you know, re record this the kazoo song and kind of like open the door. As a matter of fact, I feel like that the kazoo song was what got me the job with animation.com. Oh, so I had it backwards. Yeah. Because yeah, the good. kazoo Marley. song is is so good and so trippy, and I love like the whole story of that song, <laughs> which I I do want to get into. But I, I want just go ahead and finish up what you were saying about animation dot com and and everything. Uh, I enjoy working in in com music composition. Oh, let me say that again. I enjoy composing music. I love it. I enjoy creating. I enjoy editing, producing, recording all the vocals. Like I get to be as free as I want with music and with my singing. I get to sound as ridiculous as I want. And I'm I feel like I'm not really impressing, you know, Atlantic Records or trying to impress a huge audience with like in a concert, you know, I'm just like doing music for fun. This is this is this is what fun music is about and i'm honored to work for them and there's a lot of big things coming up and i can't wait to share it to everyone very cool i'm, I'm looking forward to it I, I, I like i said you always send me the stuff you you're working on with animation.com i think oh, in the nfts and I, I always think it's it's just great it's hilarious it's oh, a little man. off color. It's it's a little risque, but but I always like it. Yeah, I always think it's funny, and um, yeah, man, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to this animated uh, cartoon that they're looking to do too, because that would be huge for you as well, uh, and for the whole team. If they actually put out like a cartoon, like 
on Cartoon Network or something like that, and and you're doing the all the music for that, that would be like next level. Oh yeah. Is that we'll the plan? You. Is that his plan? I I'm not sure. I mean, I would hope so, or something similar to that. I can see this um, this show being more like a, a Adult Swim kind of like like a one a.m. Kind of right, like, right, yeah. <laughs> or Netflix, you, you watch like like Hobo Jack or whatever the, that show's called, or like um, you know, some adult cartoon show that's that you know, that's funny and dirty at the same time. Yeah, yeah. No, I or think just like great. randomly stupid but funny. <laughs> Dude, I love the Gazoo song. I th- I love all of you music, but the Gazoo song is is different. Um, not just because of g- the Gazoo, which I love, but that pop, but that pop, all that. But yeah. it also had the the lyrics. It kind of takes you on this crazy journey <laughs> through space and everything. And it's it has kind of some Beatles vibes to it. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. Take me through that song. What is that song? How would you describe that song? Uh, that song is probably, uh, well, I, I wrote the song originally during lockdown, COVID. Um, and there was times where I really was like, there was a lot of confusion going on at the time. There was a lot of depression. It was a, a, for the whole world, you know, not just me, you know, and I didn't know what to do with myself at times. So I happened to have a kazoo that I was using for another song. And one day I picked it up and I was like, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Trying to, I think I was trying to in, 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 tim, impersonate like a, um, like a theme song from like Nickelodeon or something. enough for Bobby Bones that was my finale song that I played and the whole crowd got a crack out of it they loved it I remember going out to you know um, take pictures and the meet and greet meet and greet with the Bobby's fans afterwards and they were just referring to me as the kazoo guy you're the kazoo guy <laughs> so when that happened <clears throat> I figured why not fix up the recording and release as a single because I wasn't going to at first. I had performed it with bands in the past, and I think between the band members, they didn't really weren't feeling it, but the audience loved it, you know. So, the, and but then I kind of like brushed it under, a, you know, a, a, a drawer for a little bit because I didn't know if that's that was really the direction I wanted to go in music. But then, the Bobby Bones, he's a comedian. And I figured, why not play a funny song at his show? So I played it. The crowd loved it. And that inspired me to go and fix up the recording that I recorded three years before. Did Bobby Bones, um, what, did he comment about the song? Did he listen to it? Because sometimes they don't watch the main, the, the uh, opening acts. You know, unfortunately, I think Bobby didn't watch my opening act because he was preparing for his act. Right, yeah. Which was, I understand that. But, you know, everyone else that was in the audience, loved it. And being called the kazoo guy the entire night was pretty cool, you know? Like, I'm a guitar player, you know? So for me to be recognized from a different instrument is, you know, pretty cool. 
but it, and it also tells you too like hey th this is this is a hit people remember this because a lot of times and it's like that with comedy too and I like that with a lot of things you don't always remember the name of the person or the artist and um but you remember something about them so for you your signature is the the gazoo you know yeah. and uh it's also kind of an original take i mean other people play the gazoo um you know in, in their in, in the in their music but it but it still sets you apart from the majority of people not a lot of people are playing gazoo and and effectively and making it fun like that so uh yeah. kudos, kudos to doing that Country music icon Bobby Bones has chosen Donnie Seal from Cary, North Carolina as his dream chaser. And now the real work is about to begin. I'm super excited for this opportunity with Bobby Bones. I'm a big fan of his radio show. And, you know, getting some mentorship and words of advice from him is going to really help me, you know, with uh, not only just with playing music, but probably with life in general. Come on in, buddy. How you doing? Good to see you. We're going to start with a handshake, but by the end of it, we're going to be hugging. All right? All right. Good to see you, Good buddy. Come on. Tell everybody who Bobby Bones is, who don't know, or not into country music or whatever, that might not know who this guy is. All right, Bobby, sweet man. Sweet, sweet, sweetest guy I've ever met. Um, he's a, he's like the Howard Stern of country music. He hosts his own Bobby Bones show on um, iHeartRadio every morning. He's been a radio host since I think 2005 he he's from Arkansas but he his upbringing and his start in radio actually was in Austin Texas and then he moved to Nashville he was also one of the mentors on American Idol during the late 2010s and then he was also the season 27 winner of Dancing uh, with the Stars Dancing with the Stars there we go but yeah um, I was on the show called Chasing the Dream. I was selected to be, you know, um, given an opportunity to fulfill my dream of performing and recording a song and writing it with some of the best writers and producers out there. So Bobby was my mentor. Immediately, I, I, we and him, I feel like we got very connected like this. Even off cameras, we were talking about hockey. We were talking about uh John Mayer, we were talking about all sorts of stuff, you know, and he was a really sweet guy. What are all these things on your guitar? I, I wrote names of, uh, so my internal stage name is Donnie Deadbugs. Mm -hmm. I took it from Sermonity. Donnie Deadbugs. Deadbugs, yeah. Do you, do you marquee that? I have it on my Instagram name, Deadbugs underscore NC. All right. <laughs> yeah. And we fixed up one of my old songs to called Take It Off. And along with Grammy nominated producer Ross Copperman, that was super humbling. I just remember we were just like writing down the lyrics and we were just figuring out the song to how to piece it together. And it was just so cool that this is like a this again a little taste of what songwriters and producers do on a daily basis. And this, you know, really humbled me and Reminded of what all my hard work is going to do one day. So I'm going to get me to that spot where I'm in a big studio. I'm writing for whether it's a pop artist or I'm writing for a movie or whatever. You know, like it was so cool. There's all the things I try to fall myself for you. Oh, yeah, I get it. I think about myself and I fall down for you. Take it all. Take it all away from me. And um, during the show, uh, Bobby gave me an opportunity to open up for him while he was on tour. So I went to Virginia Beach, drove up there. We played at the Sandler Center, Sandler Cultural Arts Center. And I opened up, I was the first opening act. Uh, another female artist named Emma Klein was the main opening act, and then Bobby went. And so I played a, a set, Kazoo song, played it last. The fan, you know, the fans loved it. And then Bobby came on stage. He didn't see my set, but I got to see his, which is cool. Right, right. 
with with chasing the dream um the episode aired over the summer it was amazing to see uh it all come together and to see that you you went out to nashville um from raleigh you went to nashville you got to record at the rca um recording studio it's like world famous place you got to be in like the, the country capital of the world pretty much in nashville yeah. um and but and you with one of the you know bobby bones who is a very decorated um guy as far as the country scene goes he's has he's he's interviewed and had and knows every single notable country superstar there is so I ha mm -hmm. and then having him there and in your ear and and walking you through do's and don'ts and then the songwriting process with that um that producer and then you had the other artist that came in the uh, uh what was his name the singer um oh jordan davis jordan davis who has a hit songs on, on his own merits i mean this is a real these are real country stars right. and and to, watching the songwriting process unfold on that episode was so amazing to see it all happen and like you said there you got these guys taking you seriously li listening to you critiquing you and making you better and i think that and I'm familiar with that song, Take It All. I remember when you first wrote it, it used to be a rock song. You kind of started to transform it into like a more of a country song. And it became kind of like a, a Christian rock song, I think, at the end, which yeah. was so nice. It was so powerful. Um, now, the changes that they make, they made, do you agree with everything, how they, everything that their ideas were? Yeah, because I finally had lyrics that i kept because i'm notorious for writing lyrics and then i change the bridge every now and then i'm kind of like eddie better with yellow lead better like i would just like <laughs> switch up the lyrics just based on what how i feel but man you know but being able to actually get more constructive lyrics and more construction on the songwriting process and on how to beginning middle and end on it was so cool you know just seeing the song i've had for 10 years kind of reconstruct a little bit not too extreme but enough to where it's kind of like has its own identity now they just changed little words here and there and and help yeah. i think help steer it in the right direction i i think to your performance so then so not only did they get you go to nashville then you ended up going to new york city in manhattan mm -hmm. on broadway and you got to perform in, in the theater there um and that performance, that was like the finale performance. If you ever get anybody ever watches this episode, uh, the uh, actual episode of Chasing the Dream, you could find it. It's on, it's still on, uh, I think, YouTube and stuff or YouTube Live or whatever. But yeah. anyway, Chasing the Dream, it, but the finale performance of you that you did was so great. You've done a lot of great performances and, and I haven't seen every single one. That, that performance was. And again, I'm, I know your dad talking here. It was probably one of the best performances of that you've done that I've ever saw. I was I was uh, so proud of you. You oh, just you. nailed it. Donnie C. There's everything I want. There's everything I need. time I try, is every time I breathe, and the world is judging me. Cause all the times I try to find my way to you, when I think about my life, you've always been my truth. Take it all, you take it all. You only did one take. You're one of the few yeah. artists artists that performed that night that only did one one take. Yeah, and I was surprised too because I thought they were going to do at least two or three, just because not necessarily because if I messed up, but because different camera angles or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw that I was maybe one of two people that did it one take. Yeah, and then the rest 
were like at least three, four takes. And like, it was nice that that whole New York City, you know, finale was awesome. You know, just seeing all the hard work that we all put towards, you know, in between our mentorship and then the final performance, just seeing everything kind of come to life was a blessing. You know, it's kind of like graduation day almost. Like kind of like you're waiting to get your diploma. And then Monica's, you know, talking to you on like stage, like, oh yeah, oh and uh, this is uh, what your mentor has to say, you know. And after you hear, you know, oh, you're gonna open up for me, kind of like that adrenaline just flushed down, and it kind of felt sad because it was like the end of that journey, you know. And it felt like graduation day, you know. It was exciting. You, you felt like you accomplished something, but now all that was over. But it also opened the door for new things that come, you know, with the with music and all that now. So um, I can thank you enough and my mentors enough for the opportunity to chase my dream. You got to always take the, the, the like the journey to success is always, you know, peaks and valleys. And, and uh, right. you got to appreciate the journey while you're on it. Sometimes the journey is better than the destination. So, yeah. you know, just enjoy everything you're doing and you you've accomplished so many things you know and we just talked about two of the big ones was animation.com and then also being on chasing the dream but also mm -hmm. you've been you've played in a lot of bands you know you with the water between you played with uh, nick driver who's a notable um artist out there in north carolina is in zebulon uh i consider him a friend i like nick driver a lot i would love to get him on here one day um also oh, fair, yeah also fair weather freedom yeah. Um, and and now you're you're you connected with another kind of band uh, that you're going to be hitting the road and doing a little touring and stuff like that. Walk me through that whole thing. So her name is Sophia Cafaro. She's a young uh, singer from Raleigh. She um, just released. She's releasing her first EP called Unbreakable, produced and written by Reggie Burrell of the Burrell Brothers. Uh, he is a Grammy nominated. Uh, multi-platinum producer, songwriter. He worked with Aaliyah. He's worked with uh, Tony Braxton. He worked with JoJo. So he's he's been in the um, music business for a very long time, and it was a privilege to you know get to meet him on the phone a couple weeks ago. Talked about what we're gonna be doing with Sophia. I'm gonna be accompanying her on guitar, and. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got her EP release show coming out in the next few weeks. And hopefully um, by this fall, we're going to be working on some new stuff with her. Can I go where you go? Can we always keep this close? Forever and ever and all. Take me out and take me It's definitely, um, it's another, you know, side of my music career. I'm a guitar player, you know, so I do the animation, I do the, comp the composing with animation.com. I do my own solo work where I'm singing and playing guitar, or, but it's more singer-songwriter led. And then this stuff with uh, Sophia is I'm bringing out my more guitar player in me. Very so cool. like I'm doing, you know, I got the best of all three worlds, you know, with music right now. And you also recorded a song for uh, Comic Sans too. Don't forget uh, the movie, the I short did, film yeah, that I, I made. Wrote, <laughs> yeah. When you walk into the room, I can't speak and I can't move. You don't see me, but you should. Why you gotta make it hurt so good? I She's great. She's a, a very good singer. And, and um, so you guys have been rehearsing, getting ready to go out on the road. What's the tour going to be like? Is it going to be a local scene tour? Are you going to be hit, hit, like hitting the road hard or, or what's the story? Um, I don't think it's much of a tour yet. I think we're just going to be doing a couple shows here and there locally. Um, if we're looking at any type of shows, it's probably going to be more of this coming fall. But I think we're going to try to get on a few shows this summer. 
Uh, can't wait to do it. Once we do it, you know, like it's gonna be showtime. You know, are you helping her write anything new? Uh, I've been working on some stuff, but it has to go through her management before anything of that. And that's that's what's new about me working with an artist that's involved with management is that I have to get through the management so they can be like, okay, you can write this for her. Now show her if she even likes it, you know? So, like, I got to be approved by two different people. Do they talk to you about managing you as well? Not necessarily. I think that Reggie is more focused on Sophia right now. And plus, I kind of like being the guitar player more than being the center artist. Just because, yeah. like, he's more on hands with her songwriting and producing, where I'm more on hands with my songwriting and my producing for myself too. Right, you're doing so, your thing, and then you, and then this project. Yeah, you you're just like a hired gun, but I, but I feel like you get you're more than just a hired gun. You're you're kind of becoming part of it, and that's that's awesome, and it's exciting too because you know, um, you know, hopefully, you know, you, you guys could make it to the next levels and and uh right. you know sophia could start you know playing uh big venues or recording a full record and have you you on the album and things like that so it's just uh, entertainment world is is so amazing in that you never really know where it's going to take you it's like getting into a river and just going with the flow it just you you, you, you know it, it takes you to different places that you didn't anticipate you want you you right. think you want to be here like you want to be the point a but you go in different directions before you ever get to point A, and and that's what I mean about about the journey. So you just got to enjoy the ride, man. And and I think that's right, what yeah. you're doing, and and um, you're doing a lot of great stuff, Donnie boy. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, uh, it's you know been fun so far. You know, lots of ups, a lot of downs, but I'm still here. You know, and I see myself ten years ago where I am now. I'd be very proud. You know, and seeing where I want to be ten years from now. I'm sure I'll be proud of myself. Where so, you think you're going to be in 10 years? Um, I like to, you know, still do what I'm doing now, but in a higher level. You know, I want to be, you know, working for other TV shows and animation, maybe land a gig with Disney or Nickelodeon, or, you know, releasing my own stuff and gaining a stronger following and, you know, just... Uh, being able to put out small tours here and there, and then playing on stage with Sophia when she blows up into a big superstar. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. You know, and that, that's all about chasing the dream, man. You just chase that dream. Exactly. <laughs> it's like Bobby Bones told you to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, this is cool. This is great. I'm, um, you know, seems like yesterday you were like, uh, it's like, seven years old playing the guitar and here you are now in your 30s still rocking out doing it professionally i'm very proud of you um and and this is just amazing to see your career kind of panning out and seeing you you follow your goal you know your destiny um what's next for you now what what like what's the uh like what's on the horizon um i'm working on some more music Right now, I'm going to try to release a few more tracks throughout the summer. I'm in the works of it right now. Um, I'm working on another jingle right now, too. So, like, it's just, like, just consistently keeping myself busy. Like, if I'm not busy with writing for animation.com, I'm working on my own stuff. And then in between that, I'm also, you know, working on practicing with Sophia and so, like, it's all about just trying to keep myself busy, and which I love because I always got something to do with music, you know. And that's something I've always wanted. I want to keep myself busy with it. Right. Very cool. Well, Donnie, she'll tell everybody where people can find you and follow you and check out your music and check out all everything you got going on. Uh, you can check out all my music uh, through Spotify on the Donnie Sill. Spotify. Uh, Pandora, any music streaming platform you can think of, you should find my music on there, including YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is Donnie Sill, but also Donnie Deadbugs. And that's spelled D-E-D-B-U-G-Z. 
And then my Instagram page is deadbugs, D-E-D-B-U-G-Z underscore N-C. I'm sure that you can uh, have like a thing where you can write down the name and put it on your screen later. Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I, it will be. It's right yeah. there right now. Look, look at it. It's right there below you. Hey, it's right, D-E-D, it's right here. <laughs> D-E-D-B-U-G-Z underscore N-C. That's Instagram. Please follow me. Like, subscribe, listen to my music, or else I have to pay for likes and follows. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> you so, don't do that. But the, hey, don't forget to tell them about iTunes. They can go buy your song on iTunes, right? Yes, it's available on iTunes for purchase. Uh, please help support local artists. You know, um, anything helps. The more that I get people to buy my music, the more I can buy more equipment for myself and keep on releasing more music and keep on chasing the dreams. So there you go. Very good. Donnie, it's uh, a pleasure having you on the Donversations. I, uh, it, this is awesome, man. Well, thanks, Don. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thanks. Donnie Sill, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>